So my name is Art Hins. I uh, studied history in college at uh, the Katholieke Universiteit Leuven uh, in Belgium. And uh, I went to the SAIS Johns Hopkins University. It's the International Relations Grad School program of Johns Hopkins. And I spent the first year in Bologna, in Italy, uh, and the second year I spent at the DC campus. It's a two year degree. And uh, yeah, I spent, after my degree, I spent another five months in the US working in Washington. And after that, I, I returned to Belgium. Well, I've been thinking about that, and I think I wanted to study in an Anglo-Saxon university system, uh, which is the reason I applied to uh, a school in England and a school in the US, uh, because I felt that it would be a very interesting uh, addition to what I had learned so far if, if I studied in a, in a different kind of study environment where you're challenged more, where the focus is more on on writing and, and interacting rather than, than, than listening and, and reproducing often very interesting stuff, but still. And I think that was the main focus. And then just by luck or bad luck, I, I was not admitted to the, to the LSE program. And I was admitted to the Johns Hopkins program. So that's why I ended up in, in the US. The biggest tip I can give is you have to start early uh, because it always takes a lot of time and the application deadlines are usually depending December, January, February. And so if, you, if you're not ready with all the testing by then, you can still get in, but it always takes a lot of more effort to send in the results later and blah, blah, blah. So if you can, if you know that you want to go out, but you don't, you're not sure where, just uh, start taking the, the, the tests you might need in September, October, and, and they'll always be useful afterward. Uh, for the school I went to, uh, they did not ask for the GRE, but they recommended it strongly, uh, which is why I took it. I don't think it played a big role in my, in my admission, but it did play a role, I think, in, in the, the grant uh, the school gave you, because they cannot compare students' results from different countries, obviously, because they're not the same grading skills. So they kind of used the GRE to see who got a, a reduction on tuition and stuff like that. So it, it can be very useful. It's never a lost effort. Uh, and uh, to prepare for the GRE, I'd say uh, just spend a lot of time online. And it's the general GRE is not very hard if you know what to expect and if you know how to tackle the test. So the first questions are very important and they get less and less important. Uh, I mean, in relation to the, the final grade you'll, you'll receive. Uh, so just refresh your high school math and, uh, and read a lot of English uh, articles and literature and newspaper so, so you can get ahead with the with the verbal part of the test. And as to the TOEFL, I never took the TOEFL. I took the Cambridge uh, language testing because it was easier uh, to do it here in Brussels. Uh, but, well, I, I don't know how to prepare for that. I just say the same thing. Just uh, read a lot, listen a lot, and, and usually you're, you're fine. My trip to the United States was funded by the BAF, the Belgian American Educational Foundation, uh, and by the Lazar Foundation, who uh, gives you a loan without interest that you can use or not use entirely. You can use the amount you want, you need. I needed all the money, uh, and then you have to pay that loan back uh, after three years over an eight-year period in, in yearly uh, chunks. Uh, I also applied for the Fulbright uh, scholarship, which I did not get. Uh, and so I would say apply to everything you can and just hope that you, you rake in enough, enough scholarships to get there. And uh, if I can give you a, 
uh, an advice, I think it's important to apply for the schools even without knowing whether you'll have the funding or not. Uh, don't get bogged down by, oh, I'm never going to be able to pay this, the tuition is too high or blah, blah, blah. Just try to go for it and try to get into the school. And then once they admit you, then there's a whole host of, of, of different options you can, you can find, uh, you, you have to, to find funding. And I think the, the order you should uh, approach the issue is first try to get admission into a school with the testing maybe in advance and then try to find the funding. Uh, and, and don't wait for the funding to apply for the school because you'll always be late. Uh, and it's easier to get funding once the people who are supposed to give you funding know which school you're going to go to, why you want to go there, and, and things like that. Well, frankly, I, uh, I was not, as I told you, I was not planning on going to the US. I wanted to study in, in, in the UK rather than in the US. Uh, and then I, I got in through uh, Bologna. I spent a year in Italy and then had to find the funding, as I told you, to go to the US. And uh, I was initially not planning on going there. And then uh, once I was, you know, bitten by the, the, the challenging academic environment and the people coming from everywhere with, in grad school, tons of them have like professional experience and, and, and things like that, uh, which I did not have before going there. And so that was all a big motivation to uh, to apply for, for the second year in, in the US. And uh, that's the first big thing I think uh, that changed in my life, mainly that I was not planning on going there. And uh, I was planning on coming back to Belgium instantly. And once I was in, in, in Washington DC, you obviously get caught up in this environment full of opportunities where everyone, basically everyone who matters at one point or another passes by DC and, and, and that indeed changes your, your, your life plans. Yeah, if, if, if once uh, you didn't even have an idea what an international career was and as a consequence were not thinking it or envisaging it, once you end up in that environment, you see that it's actually feasible and that everything depends on the choices you want to make yourself. And uh, uh, I think a U.S. or, yeah, I think a U.S. grad school degree, uh, I mean, I think to me it opened a lot of doors. I think as a foreigner in the U.S., it opens doors that you have a U.S. education. That means that you, 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 you can function at least in the language. Maybe, I mean, you're not a native speaker, but you'll always get by and you bring something to them, namely your, your own European background, your academic experiences you've had, things like that. Uh, but, but if you decide to come back, you obviously have the best of both worlds, right? Because you were brought up here and it's very easy to, to blend into the professional life, politics, academics, uh, whatsoever. Uh, and then you bring this US degree to the table and people, I mean, it's not a very common thing. And so uh, it's not only the fact that you actually really master the language, but it's also that you have a much more, uh, how would I say it? You, people coming from the US after they've been studying there, they have a very active approach to things, uh, which is very different from the approach here where you just slowly climb the steps and uh, at first, when you arrive in the U.S., you think people are very, well, too self-assured, let's say. You know, they, 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 they're not pretentious, but it's not far from that. But it's, it's, it's just a different way of approaching things. And, and, and you know, that way of, of, of being self-confident and then actually trying to, to, you know, believe in yourself when you bring that home here, uh, I think it makes a very, a, a very good impression on people maybe not across the board sometimes, but I think it does. And uh, it changes, absolutely. It changes the way you approach things. Much more active, much more entrepreneurial. I think the US has a very uh, 
particular culture when it comes down to internships, stages, where uh, even halfway through the last year of, of their grad school or college degree, they, uh, they start applying for internships and it is the way to, uh, to get professional experience in, in very interesting environments without having a lot of other professional references. Uh, and it's a very common way of uh, getting employed because often people after that employ you. So, so even though it's, uh, it's a little strange to start looking for a job that early, it really pays off to, to, to try and, and find an interesting internship while you're still studying because it gives you, it gives you a head start uh, in the, the period after that. And uh, you should know that with your U.S. student visa, you have this 12-month period of, of OPT, optional practical training it's called, uh, where you can actually stay in the U.S. on your visa while being paid a small or larger amount of money for whatever internship or job you're doing without having to ask your employer to vouch for a, for a, a work permit or a work visa. So it, it, it's exactly meant for students to spend another 10 or 12 months and, and get some experience in the environment where they, they, they study. And it's something you should very much think about because uh, yeah, it, I think it puts at, uh, at good use the, the things you've learned in school. What ook je, je vooroordelen zijn als je, als je ambitieus en geïnteresseerd bent, is het op academisch en persoonlijk gebied een enorme verrijking voor je leven uh, die je nooit meer vergeet.